is from Sojuna, originally from Western Australia. Um, my language group is uh, Yamaji Wadri, that's on my mother's side, and on my father's side is Indibandis, and that's from the Pilgrim Western Australia. I'm also an artist and I do so many different mediums as well. Um, but my love, one of my love and my passions are felting and also weaving. Um, my father is also a landscape artist, that's why I um, have a passion for art. Um, and just being an artist is a way of getting my culture out and um, a better understanding on how we do things with our paintings and our connection to culture and the land and just being an indigenous artist. about the spirit connecting with the country and also with um, the indigenous people of the Pilbara, that's where my father's from, and then also the connections that are from the desert. So we have figurations with the teardrops and then we also have the dots as well, and the dots originally come from the desert people, from Mithatharawa Luna and the desert. So like um, the desert people are the traditional people that do the dots paintings and then the, the Pilbara people do the figurations and then that's to say who I am as an artist and that's my background. The baskets so I've learned how to weave and different with different mediums like marine debris, also um, uh, raffia as well with the different mediums. Um, one of my baskets that represent water, the water holes. And um, without water, we have no life. And that's also for the human race and um, the being of um, the world. And then as I turn around, and then it also tells the story of the connection on how the water is, the ripples in the water from the the light blues to the dark blues and the different tones as well. And then also with the stories, with the baskets, that the uh, land, sea, and the sky. And then also um, the connections of the weaving so tight as well, as that to say that it's the whole story as well. So that's just another one of my passions as well, as an artist. I've only just learned how to do felting and then also um, felting happens to be one of the oldest mediums in the world, text felting. And I have still got a lot to learn about this medium and I'm really, ex I'm really excited for this medium. And not only that, it's been the oldest, one of the oldest, original, yeah. yeah. The process, um, the making the design, um, and the, the time and the passion that goes into this medium, and then seeing the, from start to finish, and learning as well as it's just amazing. I find it with doing the basket weaving, it's also um, a way to get my stories as well out with the weaving, like connections, like everything connects and it's like the circle of life and then that's how the basket is. It starts from a small little coil and then it developed into a beautiful masterpiece. I personally myself, I think it is a must to learn because this is also one of our traditions as well as in Australia as one of the indigenous 
communities because we have um, the Northern Territory people from up um, Group Island and all many different cultures of Australia, Indigenous cultures that do weaving, but then we have a desert weaving style as well. It's a bit similar like um, Africa. So yeah, and um, having the connections and Afghan background as well, and the weaving uh, from the Middle East as well. So it's like a must, and it's also keeping tradition alive as well. So um, I'm very happy that I've learned how to do it um, on a professional level. Again, because I do a lot of um, paintings about water and life, because without um, water, we haven't got no life. And that's for every being um, in, in the planet, so humanity as well. Um, but the water it does not stay still. And it's just like the human race, it does not stay still. It's always changing, it um, evaporates, and then it comes back again, and it's like a circle. The stories that have been passed down from my great-grandmother and my grandfather's, and then also from both sides, on my mother's side and my father's side. Um, and that's the way because most of my family have passed on now. And that's a way of staying connected with my ancestors as well, the stories that they have passed down to me. And then also I still pass it on to the next generation, like my children, and then so on, so on. A treasure. like a sentimental thing for me and my children. So they don't you know, like share in exhibitions or anything like that. So we just, yeah. So we just go out of country or things and then sit down and we talk about it. And they might get a piece of paint, um, piece of canvas at home or something and then just a little piece and then I'll just say, what did we do today? And yeah, things like that there. They do the painting. and of my people and of my skin groups and my language and things like that there. Um, so it's very personal and it's a very serious thing to me being an Indigenous artist and getting my stories and the knowledge of my country and of my people. Sometimes I tell the same stories and then I also paint the, paint the story but interpret the way that I will tell it. I have nothing to hide or um, just be myself as an artist and tell the truth about um, our culture. I was a landscape artist and a teacher as well. How do you get a painting ready, how to tone, how to make paint? the shadows, everything that artists need to know from the beginning to the end of the process of a painting. So I've learned a lot. Being an artist, there's different meanings. So yeah, but as with me, I'm an artist all around us, so I love to do everything. And yeah. This, Learn, learn more about art and what the art world is about.